with with that, we'll go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about another friend of the channel, Aries Spears. Uh, we've talked about Aries Spears on a couple videos on this channel in recent memory. So we'll go ahead and keep it moving. Uh, Aries Spears recently made some comments on Vlad TV, uh, talking about some of the things that irks him about. Well, I guess he was talking about some of the things that he'd like to see black people do a little different. Uh, in terms of just being better representations for themselves and their people in general. So we'll go ahead and play what Ari Spears had to say. Um, uh, this is from TMZ. So hopefully this falls under the category of free use, even though, you know, Vlad TV is a pretty big uh, YouTube channel. Hopefully we don't get hit with no copyright. Free use, man. Free use. We small fry, man. Give us a oh, chance. Yeah, give us the chance. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and play what Aries Spears had to say. I'll go ahead and play this entire clip, and then we'll give our two cents on what he had to say. Uh, Spears. Yeah. So, now, he is I, right about that. He, he yeah. is right that uh, the black women are going to come from him on that bonnet comment. He's not wrong about that. He ain't wrong Yo, about yeah. that. He going yeah, yeah. to have to put a comment. <laughs> yeah, he ain't wrong about that. Um, but you know, and you know, Aries Spears is no patron saint, right? So he's been embroiled in his own form of controversy in recent memory. So it, it isn't as though we are on this video trying to suggest that he's this bastion or beacon for what's all that's right and good with you know black people and all of that kind of stuff. But you know, nevertheless, when people say interesting things and it fits within the identity of this channel we're going to talk about it now you know we're going to we're going to bring it up because you know the comments are interesting in and of themselves so yeah he brought up soldier boy this pants sagging the bonnet wearing you know uh stop you know to him it's embarrassing um now you know you can take it wherever way you want i'm pretty sure you can get deep into the psychology behind it uh for sure but you know the airy spears went there he seems to be you know, he doesn't seem to care about saying things that's going to piss off people. So uh, he's done it again in this instance. Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, the pan sagging dynamic, you know, I did it guilty as charged. All right. Uh, did it for a, a while. And um, here is my reasoning. All right. So what I saw it on TV is what I saw it on. And I saw it on TV, and then the kids in school were doing it. So here's here's the dynamic. It wasn't all the kids in school doing it. It was, you know, the majority though. It was a lot. It was a lot more than not. And when that was going on, I had a choice to make, you know, to to not sag and be a dork, or sag and be cool. So I checked box two and I said, well, you're not going to make fun of me because my pants are too high. <laughs> I remember I remember when my parents used to take me, to, you know, go shopping for clothes, you know, just enough for five days. But I still go there and we're in the dressing room and I'm really I'm not sagging because I know not to sag in the store. You know, where I'm trying stuff on, but I'm going to still put it at, you know, where I think my waist at, you know, and they both my mom and dad, whenever they, I'm in the dressing room with them, they're bringing my pants with it should be right above your belly button. That's where, <laughs> that's, that's where your waist at. And it's like, bro, that's not where your waist at, man. Get out of here, old timer. Times have changed, man. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. So then I go to I go to school and of course I start sagging in school. Teachers didn't like it. Nobody liked it. They couldn't understand what these young people are doing. Like, why are you guys doing that? I've heard that it came from prison culture and that it was from stuff like this. Was that elementary school? I don't think so. I think I was like later, probably like in my high school years. Uh, that's when I first heard that. Uh, but I still rebuked it. My internal logic was, OK, so that's what they do in jail. Um, but, you know, if it's gay. You know, a gay man designed these clothes. Uh, there's gay musicians that I listen to their music. 
there's gay people who play sports. That's so my logic was if things are gay and gay people do it, that don't ain't nothing about it. So I didn't care. It was just that was my logic then. And as I got older, you know, college professor, you know, ran the, the same thing over, but he had a different angle from it. And he was basically saying that there's a spirit behind doing that, period. And the spirit behind doing that is availability of your, your butthole, period. <laughs> yeah. and, he's, and he's saying that if you're a man doing that, then you're not being masculine. You're, you're, you're not in a place where your masculinity is in a firm spot. So at, at that point, I was like, hmm, I still did it afterwards because I still had my own circular logic. And it wasn't until, honestly, until I got a, a job where you bet not walk in there sagging. So I got into the habit of just wearing clothes that fit and all this other stuff. And, you know, I don't have issues. And after, uh, but I was still sagging in the house because it was normal for me. And it wasn't until um, I saw somebody doing it and I wasn't doing it for a while, at least in public. I saw somebody doing it and I'm like, man, that does look ridiculous. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why this looks ridiculous now. <laughs> and then so, um, so then I made a vow to not sag in a house because it was okay since I was in a house and nobody's around and whatever. But then, um, but it was just a comfort thing, man. I was just doing it. And, um, but yeah, I had, I had interventions from professors and stuff like that, you know, not personally one-on-one, -on -one, but just hearing that you shouldn't be doing it. And so for me hearing all these outside things and getting older, uh, it was a thing where I was like, you know what? I, I get it now. And basically sagging your pants, if you don't want to equate it to masculinity, it's damn sure equated to maturity. And you're lacking maturity if you're doing that. You don't respect yourself if you're doing that. And so um, I have more things to, to chime in on this, but how do you feel about this, sir, uh, about the pants sagging dynamic? Yeah, I've so I've given up with um, trying to how do I say this? I've given up with caring whether people understand how right or wrong something is. And I've more so relegated myself to being someone who just says it how it is. And if you're receptive to the message, cool. And if you're not, cool. It is what it is. We can all be themselves. Like, I mean, we can all be ourselves out here. Like, I, I don't really care anymore about getting into the weeds of raveling people's deeply embedded psychosis in such a way for them to be able to understand how some of the things that they've been doing has been wrong. Um, I bring that up because, you know, it's interesting, this particular, the whole pants sagging thing to me, I honestly equate it to using the N word. Um, I kind of, I kind of put them on the same level somewhat because I feel as though both of them have origins in um, subjugation and negativity that in modern day terms, people have sort of flipped and reinvented to somehow be some kind of positive thing. Uh, so, you know, obviously, you know, the N word was what it was historically. And now I don't, I've been hearing this since I was damn near five, six years old. The, 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 the phrase term of endearment. I don't think I've heard the, th I don't think I've heard the three words term of endearment used more in any context than when we're talking about the usage of the N word and the whole thing with the pants sagging thing started off as a negative trope with the whole prison culture and, you know, eventually got adopted in regular mainstream society with mostly young black males doing it. And if I have eliminated for the most part, the use of the N-word from my everyday vernacular as an adult, then I have to apply the same standard to the pants thing. So the way I look at the pants thing is, if that's something that you get into as a young person because you know no better 
and peer pressure is all around with is all around you and you don't have the ability to think for yourself because in a lot of ways you're still developing your own sense of who you are i can somewhat give it a pass i don't agree with it but if i'm gonna say that people young people using the n-word is what it is but you need to grow out of it eventually then i have to apply the same standard to the pants sagging so there comes a certain point where if you're still doing this as an adult, there's something wrong there. Um, there, there, there. There is definitely something wrong there. That's not something that you should be capitulating to as a fully grown adult who is supposedly in position to think for himself. Which leads me to my greater point that there are far too many black adults who do not think for themselves. Uh, and they believe that they must adhere to certain behavioral norms because they believe that that's what it means to be black. And so for that, I would just say that if you want to go about your life as an adult, continuing to wear your pants that way or continuing to use the N word, I don't give a damn whether we're talking about the hard ER or the A on the end of the word. I don't care which version of the word you choose to use. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be using it anymore. I'll, I'll die, you know, and and I, I, I've, I've grown into that as I've gotten older. I just started to feel more and more like intrinsically something was wrong every time I used the word. Uh, and, and pretty much as an adult, it's at the point now where it will still slip out every now and then but only when I'm listening to the music and I just utter the word because it's a part of the song. So I'll still do that. But in terms of my everyday speech, I pretty much all but eliminated the use of it because I just don't understand or see how it's a term of endearment when it's a term of endearment based upon completely conditional standards. So these people can't use it, but these people can. But the people who sell the word as a product allow everybody to use it. There's no disclaimer on who can and cannot use it. So there's all kind of confusion going on out here in the streets. I'm uncomfortable with the confusion. I don't like it. So I choose to recuse myself from the environment as a whole and just not use the word period because people aren't responsible enough. And when it comes to the pants sagging thing, we are not responsible enough as black people to continue to capitulate to that kind of behavior, but still try to somehow defend it on some kind of moral ground. To me, it doesn't make sense. It's a counterintuitive notion. And so I relent at the end of the day and I say that if you want to do that, that has to be something that you do because you lack the ability to think for yourself as, as your own self-actualized human being. But it gets to a certain point where as an adult, you grow out of it and you learn how to think for yourself. And if you learn how to think for yourself and you still feel that that's okay, then that's an indication of an even deeper problem with you and with your environment, which is very valid. But if you are able to grow out of it and think for yourself and understand that there's something all the way wrong with that, I just chalk it up to a maturation in life. And you use the word maturity. I think that that is an appropriate way to frame it. Um, and so from that standpoint, I don't think Aries Spears is off with that. But I do kind of look at it with a more discerning, judgmental eye if you're walking around out here in these streets as an adult doing this stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's something wrong with that. Uh, and, and those are certain things that we can address. But when we're talking about kids, young people, even though I don't agree with it, uh, and I, I wish it would just go away entirely, there's way too much mind control. There's way too much outside influences. There's way too much social media. There's way too much music. There's way too much drug, jail, TV shows and streaming shows that are just inundating people with these messages to have them think that this is something that's acceptable behavior. And it takes an individual who is um, strong-willed enough to think for themselves to be able to say, I can glean this, but I don't have to actually copy the behavior. And I think that that comes along with time and maturity. So that's pretty much how I looked at it. Yeah, there's a, there's a dude out there. Um, his name's OG Percy. Uh, so, well, after you guys finish watching this video, go watch an OG Percy video, uh, just talking about prison life. All right. And, um, he brought up on more than one occasion of how, you know, young guys will come in there sagging their pants, thinking that it's gangster in prison. 
And then he mentioned that the more hardened guys that are in there, <laughs> all right, they uh, they enjoy that. They enjoy that. And little do those guys know they're going to get a visit uh, very soon to see what they're about. And um, when he was explaining that, now, again, I've heard it, but I've already was done with it. But um, but by the time I heard this, I was like, well, goddamn, you know, they're, 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 you, know they, you know, this is this is a thing. You know, I, and and to be fair, when I sag, I felt like my sags were respectable. Uh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. I didn't sag so you can see my underwear. All right. This is my disclaimers. I'm going there. All right. You didn't see my underwear. All right. And and when I was adult sagging, it was kind of like how Vlad said. It's like a little tug. It's where you want your waistline at, but it's a little tug, but, you know, downward but it's not like that's yeah yeah that to me yeah that to me is not sagging because like you know like like me for example i got a high waist and i got one of those you know i don't want to get too i don't want (laughs) to disclose too much info here but i like i I got a high waist and i got one of those v cuts you know so my waist kind of goes inward yeah yeah, so it just you know by by default when i put pants on Right, there's right. a possibility that you're going to see a little bit of my underwear above the fold. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah So yeah. that, to me, is not sagging. Your, your pants are still secure. Correct, yeah, but there's that, would, there's the distinction, yeah. Right. I, there were times where I would go out, you know, and this is when pants were way too large anyway. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> literally holding my pants. Like, I have right. one hand yeah. dedicated for holding my pants up because if I let them go, they'll fall down. Yeah, it's ridiculous concepts. I'm literally walking out the house naked, and so um, yeah, it's a it's a goofy. It was very goofy, but when again, man, when I was a young person, uh, I was fighting for survival socially. So uh, you know, and coming up in Miami, man, you know, kids are rude everywhere, but I really felt like. The way, you know, some of those jabs and cuts was coming in, man, is different than other locations. You know, it's t- there's other tough places, too, but Miami's rough. So hey man, it, you made know, you, it made you stronger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It made you stronger. And so at, and as a as a person who's trying to make sure that, you know, I'm not getting railroaded, you know, every day in school, I started adopting all these things. And so pants sagging was one of them. And um and another aspect of it was, uh, you know, the clean cut guys got girls too. Pretty boys got girls. But the attention was going towards the bad boys. You know, it was going towards the guys that were, um, you know, a little rough around the edges. And how 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 can you not be rough around the edges if you're not sagging your pants? This is the logic. <laughs> the irony. But then it got to the point to where... Cause I was still doing my, you know, slight sag, but it got to the point where, yeah, I'm in convenience stores, and yeah, whole asses are out, and it's like, who's signing up for this? Who, who? Nobody wants to see this, you know. So I completely agree. It does have to go away, like the bonnets, but like the bonnets, they're not going anywhere. But these are good identifiers. Now you know who you're dealing with. <laughs> so uh, if you met a girl at, at uh, Walgreens, you just passing by, you going Walgreens. And you you met a girl at, at Walgreens and you know she's attractive. You would have shot your shot in the, any other context. But she in Walgreens with a bonnet and real fuzzy slippers. <laughs> Stay away. Oh no, nah. and you hear her side of the story. Oh no, nah, I'm just coming from the house. I'm in here real quick. I'm gonna be in and out. Yeah, that's their whole that's all their story. And then there's other things that come with the bonnet behavior. So much like it, ladies, if you're dealing with a guy and you met him, he was had his pants below his his ankles when you met him. And then now he's doing other pants saggy things. What are we surprised about? So but the phenomenon and I'm tied this into topics, but this phenomenon also because there's a lot of young men doing this. And 
there's a lot of young men that are doing this and this overall to tie into our first conversation is not male behavior. And then these guys are in the dating pool for these women. And then when they're dealing with the bad boys, uh, they're dealing with guys that aren't balanced in their masculinity. So they're doing all this weird emotional stuff and the cycle continues. Uh, it's, it's, it's a thing where if we really want circumstances to change, stop using them words, keep our pants up, you know, just be respectful to yourself. And in order to see these things happen, we need a, a combined effort from those who are willing to listen. It's not going to be the masses. Forget about that. But I'm pretty sure there's some people on the fringes where they where they grapple with some of these concepts. And it's like, yeah, man, you don't have to go down that road. It's, it's, it's useless, literally. Trust me, I've been down there. And to see younger people, I really thought younger people were watching and learning from us. They're just really just watching and learning how to do it worse. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, man, the dating pool for women isn't very rich. And that's where I think it also plays into, they see this stuff too. So uh, their standards are through the roof, but uh, when it comes to, well, I don't want a guy who's, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to be sagging his pants, but, you know, sagging his pants energy, man. It's just like, bro, where's your, but this is what, but this is what happens when people don't have nothing of their own. They don't have anything to be proud of, but they're block. And that's why he was saying, you know, this is my city, this is my city, but they've never traveled. Not that traveling means anything, you know, I mean, at least internationally doesn't mean anything, but you should get around. There's some people that hadn't been out their county. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you got to move around. You got to see things different because there's bigger things than your block. But yeah, man, th these problems, these problems are, are going on. I don't see them changing anytime soon, but uh, hopefully uh, the message gets out to people enough to where they can challenge those thoughts in their brain if they're already doing them, you know? Yeah, I understand. I understand all of that. And like, the last thing that I'll say here before we move on, you know, like I said, I don't even really, I've gotten to the point where I've become so apathetic to the way the world is currently constructed. I don't really get into the weeds with let's do this to change everything. Right, I'm right. just going to report the news. Um, and in reporting the news, like if you want to, if you want to go around doing this stuff, the pants sagging, the, the using the N word all the time and all of this other stuff, that's your prerogative. The only thing that I caution against is adopting this idea that these are what this is what it means to be black. That's where I get a bit frustrated is, you know, wearing your clothes that way or using this or using that kind of language or all of these kinds of things or just gleaning certain messages from whatever you consume on your TikToks or whatever shows you watching on Netflix or stars or BET you know, believing that this is what it means to be black. I think it's important for everybody, but specifically black people, to understand that being black isn't a monolithic experience. So you, you, it does. there's no manual on being black. There's nothing that says dress this way, talk this way, watch these shows, and then you qualify as black. But a lot of people think that way. And <laughs> yeah, so that's what, I, that's what I'll say. That's when I'll kind of say, all right, let's sit down and talk about this. Because too many of us subscribe to groupthink mentality. Uh, and, and we really do. We adopt this hive type. We adopt this sort of <laughs> hive like mind where we just believe that being black is a monolith and that you're supposed to, you know, talk, dress, act and do all of these kind of things based upon all of that psychosis. And so that is where the greater conversation needs to be had because you're not going to catch everybody. It's about casting a wide net. So however many people can fall into the funnel, whether they're on the fringes or not, who can understand, I can think for myself and it's okay. I can dress like this and I still feel like I'm black and it's okay. Or I can talk like this and I still feel like I'm black and it's okay. Then the better off we'll be instead of, you know, what I think we currently have, which is, you know, being black means that you also dress like this, talk like this, and listen to this kind of music and watch these kind of shows. And Grant, to be fair, because there is such a plethora of different forms of mind control 
and programming that are out here in these streets. There's more opportunities for people to, you know, sort of incorporate different aspects of their identity. Uh, but there's still plenty of that stuff going around, too, where it's like, uh, I'm black, therefore I must capitulate to these habits and behaviors. So, and that's the only thing that I'll ever contest and want to sit down and talk about. <laughs> But other than that, if you want to sit here and try to tell them, if you want to sit here and try to convince me that your pants sagging and, you know, use of the N word is what you're supposed to be doing, bro, you don't need to convince me because I don't care. Have at it. Do whatever you want, because I've gotten over trying to change the world. I'm just JV wins on constant approach, trying to report the news. And I approve this message. <laughs> Stop it, brothers. <laughs> Pull your pants up. I'm telling you now, especially if you're a younger person. Stop it. <laughs> it's not cool yeah, man we are not a monolith man it's bad enough that non-black people believe that but it's worse when black people themselves believe in the idea of the black monolith so hey, um, i can't go i it's certain rooms i can't go in because i ain't watched pay in full right uh, <laughs> or, or, or in too deep yeah or any right. other these other uh classes oh you you never saw <laughs> No, I never seen State it. State property. State, State property. property. Yeah, I, mean, I, just, I never watched it. <laughs> you ain't never seen State property? No, no, here it is. Uh, I'll, say, I'll say this. One. Scarface was the one that I was like, I'm not watching it, bro. I'm not watching it. Yeah, then I watched yeah. it and I was like, this is a good movie. This is, right. this is, this is, uh, this is different. So, um, but yeah, it, it's other movies where it's like, nah, I'm not watching it. So yeah, this, mm -hmm. this is some rooms I can't go in just because of that. You know, right. I can I can say as I can say as much, uh, you know, uh, centric things that I want about the community, and it's like, man, this guy's all right. As soon as we start going down some of these list of movies, they'll revoke my card. Same yeah, people. It's it like, sure. bro, I was just we just had a whole hour long conversation about how we need to build a community. Yeah, but you never saw paid in full. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can trust yeah. you, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all of that, all of that falls into the same bucket. It all does, and you know, it is what it is, man. It's all good. It's content for the channel, so appreciate it, Aries, and appreciate it, Vlad. Y'all pull them damn pants up, man, and then you know, so whatever with everything else, man. Yeah, pull them things up. Pull them up. <laughs>